What have we got there? I'm gonna show you this this guy here. This is this is mad. It's belted onto a tree. What is that doing here? Why is that? Oh, I don't want to get too close. Actually, I don't know what that is doing. It's bloody. It's like belted on. What is this? Well, that's probably the most exciting thing you'll see whole episode. So um, enjoy. There's a bird over there. Go, 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 go! I'm feeling lucky. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this really special edition of 10 Meter Walks. Uh, I am here in Boston. That's Boston, USA, Massachusetts. And, um, yeah, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different today um, because we might see some animals that we don't get in the UK, might see some different kind of environments and um, we've got a good day of weather as well. So this is gonna be a really special vlog. I'm currently in the center of Boston, would you believe? Looking around, it's pretty nice. Um, and yeah. We've got this lovely, lovely lake behind me. Um, we've got loads of trees, loads of birds. Um, I just looked, had a look on Google Maps. Uh, couldn't see anything specific that was about that I wanted to film. So I'm just gonna go find a place, give it a go, see what happens. So, see you in a moment. Through some trees, whoa, okay. It's pretty cool here, actually. Um, yeah, we've like got this big pond. Uh, I think it's called Riverway and uh, separated by a river, a lakey kind of river. And I've spotted an island on the map and I wanted to see if I could get there. And the only way to get there is across this. Welchy mud. Drip. It's probably mostly like bird poo. I'm on this island now. I've managed to make it across. Whew. Right, let's have a look. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> Got a wild one today. Okay. Oh, fantastic fungus. Oh, hello, bird. Little jagged all that. So take a look across here. This is nice. First off, let me just put some things straight. Apologies if the feedback is out of date. I've just got to episode four and I've been doing editing for episode one and two and three. So I haven't even recorded um, anything with the feedback incorporated yet. So this one will have the feedback from episode one in it basically. So the feedback was, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing while you're doing it? And yes, I'd love to. The tricky thing is obviously that's using up the time hour, which I'm finding is the most constraining of all the factors I've put in this. However, I will try my best and incorporate some of that or maybe narrate over the top. Sadly, I only have one camera, so I can't really get B-roll of me doing it. How do I edit it? How do I film it? What am I thinking about? Okay, peeps, if you don't know the rules, if you don't know the rules, then go back to episode one or episode two and watch it because they have the rules on and I'm not gonna explain them again. It's gonna take half the video. I'm gonna just show you my 10 meter. Oh my God, there's a hole in the ground. What lives in here? Look at the hole. Ooh. So here we go, 10 meters from here. We're gonna go through down here at the edge of the water to the end. Go, 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 go. Wow. Say 
There we go. Ooh, stop. So that was actually a pretty interesting one. There were two little sparrows ticking about, and I think they were sparrows anyway, but they were looking really cute. One of them was a young one, and one of them was the mum, and they were kind of calling to each other, and it was seeing whether it could fly away. So I might make a little story out of that. I think in the end it did fly away. But other than that, again, quite a lot of just general shots. There were a lot more birds this time, which was interesting, but it took a while for me to kind of chase them and get any shots, so I can't form a narrative with those. They might just be like nice filler shots. Um, and there were also tortoises, uh, turtle, no, sorry, terrapins, terrapins. There were terrapins out there, they're sitting on the log, I can see them right now, but they don't move. <laughs> so they're not very interesting, uh, other than, well, I think they're interesting, but they're not very, like, dynamic in a film. So if I could have got a bit closer to those, um, but they're about 30 metres away outside of my 10 metre zone, so I can't, and across water, so that would have been hard. I think one of the main things I'm thinking of is to keep it simple. I think that is one of my top number one, okay, so top tips time, top tips of the day. Uh, they might not be very good, but top tips of the day. My number one is to always try and keep it simple. And that means using a tripod as a general rule of thumb in my eyes, the simplest way to do it is if you've got a subject, keep the shot still if the, sh if the subject is moving. Um, that way the subject is moving through your frame, it's drawing your eye through the frame, it's quite interesting. If you move the camera too much, it's very common to try and chase these kind of animals when they're moving, and it can look good if you get it right, tracking's fine, but you're more likely to get a worse shot or to not do it well. So if you want to create something good in a limited set of circumstances or a limited time, keep it stationary and you're probably going to get something good. Lighting. Lighting is always important. We've got an overcast day today, so it's generally quite favourable, unless I'm shooting the sky, in which case it just booms out and looks white. Um, generally, overcast means it casts a kind of like nice white light on everything, and it's all kind of quite diffused. Um, just make sure if it's sunny that you're using backlighting appropriately, you're not getting too much glare, and if it's diffused like this, it can look quite nice if the object is facing the light and you're getting that nice even light on their body. Filler shots. Never underestimate the power of a good filler shot and when I say that I mean um, a bit of video that just is general and nice and is like a transition piece between the actual subject. If you, um, if you make your entire video about a subject you will never get any variance, you will never get any ups and downs, it will all just be the subject and your video will be very flat in total. Whereas if you have sections or if you mix it up with some filler shots moving on to the next thing, then that is good. Moving the camera around and I'm doing dynamic stuff, I'll tend to do flat motions in one direction because Basically the stabilizer can only do so much. I don't have a, a, a glide cam or a crane with me or anything like that. I'm just holding the camera with my hands. And so if you drag the camera along slowly, you are going to make it as stable as possible. Also, the stabilizer in Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, or whatever you're using, will be looking for a dominant motion. That means either forwards, backwards, side, side, up or down. Yeah, up or down. So basically, um, you want to give it as much help as you can by moving it in one of those directions. If you're like going, whoa, 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 and there's a bird over there, then trying to follow a, oh my God, there's fish having a fight. I want to get some footage of that and splice it right in. <laughs>
that's quite loud. Can you hear me? 